the, almost all death is covered, except where death of livestock is as a result of mismanagement. Now, insurance is not a substitute for management practices. That even with insurance, the farmer is expected to, to carry out proper farm management practices. If you are not feeding your animals and they die out of uh, starvation, then insurance will distance themselves. So it is mortality for as long as the farmer has carried out proper farm management practices. Uh, number two, the other exclusion that is probably not covered by insurance is uh, if, if there is war. War is generally an exclusion for all insurance policies across, and they kill your animals, then the insurer will not, will not pay. But if it's drought, if it is disease, if it is lightning, if they fight and kill each other, among other possible causes of death, then uh, the insurer pays. Now, how much? Will it cost the farmer to buy insurance? Not quite a lot. Now, the cost, first of all, generally speaking, varies from uh, uh, farming enterprise to another. If, for instance, you are in dairy, dairy farming, dairy farming is fairly riskier than if you are farming for beef. Now, if you're farming for dairy, an insurer will charge you 5% of the two, either 5% of what they call the production costs. Now, production costs are basically the, the inputs that, that the farmer injects in raising the animal up to maturity. Now, if that is hard, there is an alternative. The alternative is the pre-agreed value of the animal at the maturity of the insurance policy. If, for instance, you are buying insurance for a cow for one year, you agree with the insurer that between today and the end of one year, this cow will be worth one million shillings. Now, the insurer will subject 5% to the one million shillings. That's about probably 50,000. You pay 50,000 as premium. Now, should this animal die within the cost of insurance, by the causes I've just talked about, the insurer pays the one million shillings. If it is uh, for beef, the percentage lowers to 4%. And this is for exotic, by the way. For our local breeds, our local breeds, you know, are very resistant. The percentage even lowers to as low as 2% or 3%, depending on location. So averagely 25 to 3% for the local breeds. For the exotic, the 4% and the 5% is mainly for the exotic. Fish farming... I said fishing is also part of livestock. That's a little, again a little more risky. They charge six percent of the production costs or the pre-agreed value, as at the time of uh, the insurance uh, period. And there is also an additional good news: the five percent, the six percent, the three point five percent that I talked about. Government has already come on board and provided what we call insurance premium subsidy. So, for Large-scale farmers, and large-scale farmers for, for, for cattle, anybody who has uh, uh, 50 cows, for instance, and above, is considered large-scale. Below 50, 50 cows is considered small-scale. Now, if you fall in the small-scale category, 50% of your premium has already been paid by government. So the example I gave of uh, 1 million shillings, 5%, that is 50,000 shillings, the farmer will only pay... 25,000 shillings because government has already committed in advance the 25,000 for the farm. If you're in the large scale category, government has already paid 30% of the premium. So if you are in the large scale category, the 50,000, you only pay 70% because 30% has already been paid by government. Now, to me, that's, that's, that's the best gift that our government can give to us. That is the best gift that the insurance industry can give to the population. And uh, as a regulator, I really want to encourage the public that gone are the days when agriculture was just being done as, as you know, as culture, it's a tradition, my parents. Did. Today, agriculture should be done as a business. But that is only possible if farmers embrace the modern systems of managing risks 
which they cannot manage individually on the farm. So when you look at these costs, uh, and you look at you do what we call the cost benefit analysis, as the Insurance Regulatory Authority of Uganda, we make a case that actually anybody who is looking at undertaking farming as a business has no option probably, other than buying insurance. What we have been hearing about the quarantines and what why are people even willing to die because this is their life state. If they die, there is no other option. So why would you die for a cow, for instance, when there is a mechanism for you to hedge against some of those, uh, what they would call avoidable risks? They are not avoidable naturally, because most, most of these are natural causes, but they are avoidable practically, because the insurance industry has provided alternatives. Now, in terms of operationalization, farmers can access agriculture insurance by visiting any of the non-life licensed insurance companies that uh, can be traced on our website, but they can also visit the Uganda Insurers Association. Now, what the insurers have done, they have formed what we call a consortium. The different insurance companies have come together and formed a group so that they are able to handle these risks as a group collectively. Now, that's, that's an approach that is adopted in many countries because agricultural risks can be too massive and an individual company may not handle. Now, to overcome such risks, insurers have come together as a group to ensure that they are able to provide a policy that will stand the test of time. A regulator has a role. Our role as a regulator is to ensure that once an insurer has made a commitment, that commitment is lived to. Now, the farmers could have fears that if I pay my money and they get a loss, will I really be compensated? The answer is no. Anything less than that, the regulator stands firm to ensure that the rights of the policyholders and the policy beneficiaries are upheld. We have a complaints bureau here at the authority. Now, should any member of the public have any concern about insurance? Should they feel that they are not getting the best from the insurance? We offer free services because that's our number one mandate. Policyholder protection lies at the heart of our agenda.